Hello, Jim here. Happy holidays. Speaking of the holidays, it is getting kind of cold out there. Winter is coming. And winter is coming! Winter is coming. That's right, winter is coming. And along with the winter comes a lot of different diving considerations, and that's what we're going to talk about today. First, we're going to talk about what is cold weather to you, because that makes a really big difference from person to person. Varies quite a bit. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about exposure protection. Mostly wet versus dry, but not only. And then last, we're going to talk about uh, winter waiting. Because of course in the winter, when you're like me and you put on those winter pounds and you put the extra exposure protection, you're going to need extra weight. So well, let's get into it. Alrighty, first, uh, the big question is, what is cold? For me, I've heard the magic number is 69 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the 20 degree Celsius mark. And for me, for sure, when I reach that, that 20 degree mark, 20 degrees Celsius, I'm going, uh, I'm really preferring to be in a dry suit. Shout out to Wes. Wes was telling me that for him, uh, 59 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit is where he really starts to feel the difference of what's cold and what's not cold. Kudos to that because that is way cold for me these days. I have heard that um, people who do a lot of diving, dive guides and dive masters, get more rather than less, more sensitive to the cold. And I'm told that's why in the Philippines and in Thailand, these dive guides, they're really bundling up. Who knew? Also, between men and women, you'll definitely see some differences. Sorry, I'm sorry about this, but uh, women tend to be much more sensitive to the cold. So it's said, if you look on eBay, prove it to yourself. There are an awful lot of dry suits for sale on eBay, women's dry suits that say phrases like, only been dove once, perfect condition. So it is what it is. All right, so another, another big uh, influencer on the water temperature. For me, it's not only the water temperature, but you might find, like myself, it's almost more the air temperature. Because the water temperature might stay a little bit warmer than the air. But for me, I'm going to walk out there one late November or early December, and it's going to be cold, rainy, and maybe windy on the shore. And that's going to put me right over the edge. Because uh, when you get out of the when you get out of the water, you're trying to take your equipment apart, and your your hands are just freezing. And if you have neoprene, that that wind on the neoprene is just going to be going nutty, right? It's going to be driving the temperature right down. Not a good thing at all. Which is why you might want to get a boat coat. And I have a link down for the Surfer boat coat. And also, I'll put it down there the link for the review I did on that. It's a perfect time of year for for a boat coat. Anyway, when you're thinking about wet versus dry, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, pros and cons out there. One is definitely expense, right? Dry suits are expensive, and there's no doubt about that. Right now, I'm, I'm with a Fusion, an Aqualong Fusion suit, gorgeous suit. Um, this is my third, third or fourth one. I've been using those for a while. Um, other folks out there are using thick neoprene. Now, the downside, uh, the upside of thick neoprene is it's readily available, and it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, some of the downsides of thick neoprene are, um, you know, it might be harder to get on and get off. Uh, it's going to mess with your buoyancy a little bit, right? Thick neoprene is going to have a lot of compression and decompression as you go down and come up. So those last six meters especially are going to be really tough to keep your buoyancy at that safety stop, which you might find. Um, what else? Also, you might find that it's not all that warm. I think Wes was telling me he was a little disappointed in his uh, thick wetsuit, so uh, I don't know. I've never worn a thick wetsuit. I, I usually, I'm five mil, and after that, I'm a dry suit, so I, I really can't say. I think one time I had a 6.5. I wore it once or twice. I hated it. I got rid of it. I know California folks are big advocates of the thick neoprene. Chime in. Let us know how it is. On the dry suits, I've got dry suit videos out there. I'm gonna put the links there, uh, have a look. A lot of information, a lot of advice on what to do and not to do, uh, what the different dry suits are, pluses and minuses, and if dry suit diving is for you. Just as a side note, if you are going to buy a dry suit used, which is what I did at first, be really careful of the sizing. So the number one dissatisfaction point of people who buy a used dry suit is that they bought the wrong size because they never got to try it on. They bought it through eBay, very common, and they didn't know it was too big, it was too small. 
uh, maybe you know it sounded good and when you get your undergarments under it then it became too small uh, make sure you know the size that's the number one mistake for buying a used dry suit last on the topic of exposure protection remember your hood remember that hood you, know, you learned it in open water about how, how important that that head is I'll never forget one time I was diving in a lake Lake Motosko it's on the it's around Mount Fuji it's an altitude lake it's about a thousand meters up and I was diving it in June and in June it was like 10 degrees Celsius real cold for me for me that's cold and I had to go in um, I was leading a dive and I, I forgot my hood and I was with uh, I was only leading one person my dive masters were leading other people and I was with this guy and the minute my head hit the water I wanted to vomit actually I just had this sensation like I wanted to vomit it was it was very ridiculously strong and uh, you know I was fighting that feeling the whole dive and, and the person I was guiding was in a, in a wetsuit so I was kind of just waiting like when is he gonna be cold when is he gonna be cold when is he gonna be cold like when is he gonna call the dive uh, I think he made it like 20 minutes I was never so happy yeah so uh, make sure you have a nice hood all right last gonna talk briefly about waiting so uh, if you're like me during the holidays you're gonna put on the pounds anyway so no matter what, even if you were diving the same wetsuit, you might need another kilo or so, another, I don't know, half pound, pound of, of weight to keep you down just because you might've bulked up in the winter like me, you know, good hibernator, that's me. And the other thing is, if you're gonna go to thicker neoprene or to a dry suit, absolutely you're going to need more weight, obviously. And there are a lot of different ways to do that. You know, your BC may vary. Personally, I'm using a backplate and wing BC. I am not a big fan of weight belts at all. And uh, let me see, on my, on my backplate and wing rig, I've got three kilos is the plate itself. And then I have weight pockets that'll hold four kilos and four kilos. And that's, that's about it. And that, that will usually do me for uh, most scenarios um, to not have a weight belt. However, However, if uh, in the winter, if I'm in my dry suit, especially if I'm using an aluminum tank, it might not be enough. I don't like a weight belt. So what I'll go to, maybe you've seen this, uh, this is a heavy STA. So this is a single tank adapter, but inside it has lead poured in it. So this STA with the lead, the heavy STA is an extra three kilograms, right? Six pounds. Um, I, they're getting really difficult to get. I don't see so many folks selling these. I'll put some links down below if I can find places that are selling these, but they're, you know, they're really valuable. I know Halcyon makes one. It's all the bucks. Let me see if I can find some cheaper ones and I'll link them up down below. If you have a back plane to wing, you're going to go dry or really thick neoprene. You might want to look into a heavy STA. I only use it during the winter when I'm bulked up with my dry suit. That's about all I wanted to pitch. Happy holidays to everybody. Easing into your winter diving. There's a lot of interesting things to see out there during the winter season. Maybe some creatures you hadn't seen. Definitely fewer divers. Maybe better visibility. I'm not sure what it would be like in your area, but enjoy whatever it is. And please comment up down below. So are you a winter diver? And uh, if so, why, why do you dive? Is it uh, some creatures you can see, some better conditions? Uh, what is it? And anybody who wants to put up, you know, list up your cold weather strategies if you have any down there. I was just trying to get back into it after a little bit of a layoff. Yeah, today you might, as know, might have noticed I'm, I'm not in the garb. You know, I, it's been a bit of a layoff and I had a bunch of people asking me if I actually have hair because I'm always wearing the hat. So I thought I'd show you the do, right? It's, you know, it's a little extreme right now. I just got it cut. So that's what that was. All right, well, if you stuck this long, thanks for sticking back. I'm just trying to ease back into it. I, I fell out of it for a little while. Uh, thanks again to uh, the friends of the channel, our Patreons. Uh, you'll see the list here at the end. If anybody wants to buddy up with the channel and, and give some support, links down below. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you at the beach.